All right, what I propose to do here is uh, to load the FMS using a TDU uplink and showing you how the ACARS works uh, according to the MP20 section so that you can see stuff that you haven't seen in the sim. So the book tells us the first thing we're supposed to do is check the database. And then from that point, and we, I recommend not swapping the database, by the way, it doesn't do a whole lot of good on this aircraft. Then you put the from to. Today we're going from Atlanta to Tallahassee. And then go back here. If the IRUs were not aligned, it would give you a prompt here to align the IRUs, but you can see we're in GNS position and our taxi speed is zero and latitude and longitude looks respectable. The next step, it says, is to go to the ACARS, data init, initial request, put the en route flying time, which is 38 minutes today, and the fuel on board. It's supposed to be 13.3. We've got 13.4. It really doesn't specify which one to put in. I'll go ahead and put in 13.4. On the next page, we're going to put our numbers. Mike? 345083. So we get credits for the takeoff and landings. Then we take a look at the flight plan. The flight plan tells us release number one. So we'll put release one here. And we'll push send. Now this is not part of the script. And actually it's written on the uh, first officer's pre-flight duties, regardless of whether he's a pilot flying or pilot monitoring. But usually it works out a lot better if you are uh, loading the box to get the ATIS. And if you're within 30 minutes of our scheduled pushback, which we are not right now, get the, uh, get the PDC. So we'll have to come back and get the PDC. From that point, um, and this is the departure ATIS, and this is release number one, okay. So from this point, we should be able to uplink the flight plan from the TDU, or I should say the AOC COM menu. So I want reference AOC COM. And you want to load from top to bottom on the right, and the order is important, or you may lose data. Route. It says to review it. I want you to notice how carefully I'm reviewing the performance data, the flight plan, and the wind data. And the reason is, is because I'm going to check it again once it's fully loaded in the box. Now we're going to go in and flesh it out. From the ATIS, we can see that uh, we are departing uh, to the east. So we'll expect uh, 9 left of Mike 2 on the Thrasher. So on this, I'm going to go ahead and select runway 9 left. Oops, sorry, let me put it back so you can see my fingers. And then it's not on the normal SIDs, so custom SIDs. I'm going to zip down to the Thrasher. Of course, it's towards the bottom. Thrasher is selected. And then it is the left transition. This is all coming off the flight plan. I'm going to insert that. I'm going to clear out the scratch pad because I don't need those remarks anymore. And then on the arrival procedure, uh, well, it's Seminole Tallahassee, which is pretty darn close. I'd like to get rid of the discontinuity. And I could load an approach right now if I wanted to. Usually not a good idea to do it off of uh, the airport, unless uh, there's not an arrival procedure like in Tallahassee. So uh, the winds are out of the east there. If I do the RNAV, I'm going to have to get the MIM probe. So I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do that this morning. I'll get that sometime in route. From this point, we're just going to flesh it out. So uh, NAVRAD, nothing. Performance, book tells us to go to page three and make sure we have decent friends. Init, you want to put a zero for the alternate. Make sure the cruise altitude, temp D, cost index are all good. Call sign, Delta 2356, sure enough, looks great to me. Page two. Um, block fuel, uh, usable fuel on board, 13.3 uplink, 13.4 is what we've got. I'm going to go ahead and line select that as a technique so my zero fuel weight agrees better when we uplink the weight data record. On the takeoff page, thrust limits, we want to select climb one. Secondary flight plan, we're going to copy the active. Fix, if we had a position report, we would put it in. Uh, our runway, as a technique, I'm going to put KTLH for right now, Tallahassee. And uh, then uh, the next page is progress. I'm going to check the total distance here, which is 201 against the distance on the flight plan. The distance is showing 194, and that looks good to me without an approach loaded in. Last step is we're going to go up here, and we're going to select plan. So we go to plan here, and then we're going to go to flight plan. And we're going to step through this thing.
By the way, this is an excellent time to check the fixes on your EFB and make sure that you have them all in right for the Thrasher 8, which is what we're flying. So I'm really checking here, checking here, and checking here all at the same time. So I can see that I have Brits, Heisman, 250 knots, by the way, there, which is in the book. Thrasher, so I scroll up on my tablet. Luck, and then if we had a longer flight plan, which we don't this morning, I would go to the fix list here on the flight plan if I can find it. There it is. And I would check all those. So you can see I have Thrasher Luck, uh, Seminole, Seminole, and Tallahassee, which is stepping through Seminole and Tallahassee up there. After I'm done with that, I'm going to read all the notums on this flight plan. I'm going to place it up here on the dash, and I'm going to tell the pilot monitoring the FMS's program and ready for him to check.